from Kern Government Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 at Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Board to reconvene. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Peters. Here. Supervisor Scrivener. Here. Supervisor Maggard. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the Tuesday, May 24th, 2 p.m. meeting of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we'll first hear from County Council, Margot Rezon, for a report on action taken in closed session. Ms. Rezon. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the Board. This morning in closed session, you met on items 60, 61, and 62, and there is no reportable action. Thank you. Now we will consider the consent agenda. Agendas are located on the tables near the entrances to the chambers for anyone wishing to follow along. All items listed with a CA or a C above the item number are considered to be routine and non-controversial by county staff. The CA represents the consent agenda for the Board of Supervisors. The C represents the consent agenda for the current sanitation authority. Consent items will be considered first and may be approved by one motion. If a member of the audience wishes to comment or ask questions regarding an item on the consent agenda, they may do so prior to a vote being taken. A member of the board may remove any item from the consent agenda and it will be considered in listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. At this time, I will read the consent agenda item numbers for the Board of Supervisors agenda. Starting on page two, we have items four and five on consent. On page three, we have items six through nine on consent. On item nine, I have to read in some additional language. Um, at the end of the, of the capitalized type, um, after the uh, HUD in parentheses, it will read authorized director to execute agreements in furtherance of program implementation as described herein, subject to approval as to form by county council. Also item uh, 11 is on consent on that page. On page four, we have all items 12 through 15 on consent. On page five, all items 16 through 22 on consent. On page six, items 23 and, oh, sorry, all items 23 through 26 are on consent. Um, however, I have a correction to read. We had a, a couple of minor typos on item 24, it reads um, in the second line of the capitalized type, um, that number should read 15061B3. So a couple of numbers were transposed. Also same issue on item 25, the dollar amount in the fourth line down um, should read 26,830 rather than 380. Now on page seven, all items 27 through 34 on consent. And on page eight, all items 35 through 40 are on consent. However, item 35 has been removed from the consent calendar by the chief administrative officer and will be heard in its normal numerical sequence. So we're gonna pull that item off of consent. On page nine, we have item 41 on consent, as well as items 43 through 47. And finally, on page 10, we have items 48 through 54 that are on consent. So now I'll ask if there's any members of the audience that would like to make any comment or ask questions on the consent agenda items for the Board of Supervisors. Looks like we have one person, please come forward. Actually, you state your name and let us know which item you have a question about or comment. This is uh, Kyle Alhilo, uh, CA 13 and 14, Alta Vista building. Okay, you said Kyle Hilo? Yes, Hilo. Alhilo, okay. that's fine. Okay, so 13 and 14, those two items. Okay, please proceed. Um, 
I came to my attention, uh, this is a property I bought, it was a fire damaged property I bought in 2018. Before buying it, I had a structural engineer go out there and look at the walls that's standing right now. They said the walls are good to be used, no problem. Uh, in 2020, I wanted to start doing uh, construction, but because of COVID and plus I got sick, I ended up on dialysis. I couldn't do much, it's been sitting there. I did try to cover it up, whatever. There's nuisance, they're saying, there's people reporting on it because the buildings are there. I do have a report to go ahead and make it supported around whatever the price is, but I'm deciding today to go ahead and let you guys go ahead and demolish it because but, uh, it's just like, it seems like everything's against me, like you already made your decision. But I just want you to know that's the only reason I have not built it yet, just for the money and personal problems and with the COVID. When I had COVID, I lost my kidney, so. Okay. That's my situation. I do want to build it. I, uh, somebody told me about uh, FRAB uh, steel buildings. I don't know if that's allowed on the property or not. But my other thing is it has two parcel numbers on there. So I'm getting billed twice. And I don't know if I could talk to the whoever's in charge of that to make it just one bill. I'm getting charged everything double. And before I was getting whatever, it was always just one bill. Now I'm getting two bills. Mm -hmm. That could help me out right there. That's about it. Okay, Mr. Healy, thank you. Um, this, this item is in District 3. Um, Supervisor Maggard, would you like to make a comment? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, sir, for thank telling you. us about it. Hold on just a second, okay? Uh, staff, could we help him in two regards? Uh, help him with this, the potential of maybe collapsing this into one parcel instead of two uh, and confirm for him that is he or, not, is he or is he not being billed twice? I, I hope that's not the case. But then could we also help him understand what options he has as he develops the property. It would be wonderful to see it up and going again in some viable fashion. So uh, I just would ask staff to work with him directly. Uh, and your, your name, sir, was Carl. Al Hilo. Yeah, Hilo. Okay. Al Hilo. Al Hilo. So um, could we just work with him to make sure he understands that? Thank you, Mr. Al Hilo. You can call my office if you, if you need uh, uh, any under help understanding what the process of the county will be. But I appreciate your understanding where we're going today. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from members of the public? Okay, seeing none then, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda and to adjourn as the Board of Supervisors and to reconvene as the current sanitation authority. So, so okay. I'll second it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. <laughs> the motion is approved, four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. We're now sitting as the current sanitation authority and we have one item to consider on consent. And this is item number one. Do we have any members of the public that would like to make any comment on this item? Okay, I don't see any. Then I'll return to the board, ask for comments or questions. Otherwise, entertain a motion to approve item one and to adjourn as the current sanitation authority and to reconvene as the Kern County Board of Supervisors. Motion. Second. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. Four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. So we are now um, sitting as the Kern County Board of Supervisors. The next item on our agenda will be item two, public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the board. Board members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the board at a later meeting. Also, the board may take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. So I'll ask if there's any members of the audience that would like to make a comment under public presentations on an item not on our agenda this morning, or this afternoon, rather. Okay, I don't see any requests for public presentations. I'll move on to board member announcements and reports. Okay, seeing none, then that will take us to our next item on the agenda that is off consent, and that is item number 10. This is under the Public Works Department. And this is consideration of a request to consent to transfer stock of Varner Brothers, Inc., Price Disposal, Inc., Mountainside Disposal, Inc., Superior Sanitation Services, Inc., Howard's Garbage Service, Varner and & Son, Incorporated, and Lamont and Sanitation, Inc., to Burtek Kern, LLC, proposed letter of consent, and approval of supporting amendments. And so I'll turn to Sam Lux, our Interim Director of Public Works, to start off this discussion. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman. On October 6, 2021, the county received a request for consent to transfer all outstanding corporate stock of the companies to Burtek Kern, LLC. As per the franchise agreement for each of the companies, the county's prior written consent for the transfer is required. To evaluate the justification to provide consent, there are three major considerations. 
The first consideration is that credible and sufficient evidence shows that Burtek Kern LLC is qualified by financial condition to fully assume and perform all of the company's obligations under the franchise agreements. The Burtek Kern LLC is a California LLC organized on July 23rd, 2021, but currently has no assets or operating history. However, they are an affiliate of Burtek Waste Industries, which is a much larger organization and it has extensive existing operations in Southern California. Burtek Waste Industries has executed a guarantee which guarantees Burtek Current LLC and each of the company's obligations under the franchise agreement for the terms of the agreements and any amendments or restatement to the agreements. Additionally, a county review team consisting of members of the Auditor Controller's Office and the CAO's Office reviewed financial information presented by Burtek from a financial perspective, they did not find any concerns that would be a cause for the county to oppose the stock transfer. The second consideration is that evidence shows that Burtek Kern LLC is qualified by operational experience to fully assume and satisfactorily perform all of the company's obligations. As previously mentioned, Burtek Kern LLC is a new formed company and they will be guaranteed by Burtek Waste Services. Burtek currently provides solid waste services to multiple municipalities, county service areas, and county areas in Southern California. Burtek provided references, and those references were contacted and all provided positive feedback on Burtek's waste collection services. Based on their portfolio of waste collection agreements, operational experience, and the guarantee, it is the opinion of the Public Works Department that they have adequate operational experience to assume all of the company's obligations under the franchise agreement. The third consideration is that the transfer of the stock is in the best interest of the public health, safety, and welfare of the county. There was concern that Burtek Kern LLC would try to recoup their purchase price through future, future rate increases that would negatively impact rate payers, but that concern was mitigated through a rate letter stating that they would not use the purchase price as a factor in any future rate adjustments and they stated that any future rate adjustments will be limited to those factors defined in each of the franchise agreements. Additionally, they provided redacted copies of their stock purchase agreements that did indicate that they are significant tangible assets and other value assets that are included in the sale that represent a significant portion of the value of the sale. Of other concern is the county's compliance with SB 1383 and the need to be able to implement programs quickly. An amendment to the existing franchise agreements was jointly prepared with the county and Burtek that will meet these requirements. The amendment also provided for a rate for these services, but that rate will still be subject to a Prop 218 protest hearing prior to implementation of the services. The amendment will not become effective until the completion of the sale of the companies to Burtek Current LLC. With the rate letter and the amendment in place, the Public Works Department believes that the transfer of the stock is in the best interest of the public health, safety, and welfare of the county. The CAO's office and county council have also indicated their support of this position. Therefore, I recommend that your board approve the request of the companies to transfer their stock to Burtek Kern LLC. I now turn it back over to the board for consideration. Thank you, Mr. Lux. I'll ask if there's any questions from members of the board before I go to the audience. Okay, seeing none, are there any members of our audience that would like to make any comment on this item? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jacob Panero, P-A-N-E-R-O, representing the Metropolitan Bakersfield Garbage Haulers. Chair Scrivener, Honorable Board, thank you for considering this item. Thank you also to the Public Works staff, County Council and the CAO's office, and of course the board for your work leading up to this item. Our families would like to thank our coworkers, vendors, the board, of course, our community, the residents and businesses here that have allowed us to go on this business journey for 90 years. But moving forward, we are excited to show this community what Burtek and their team can offer, not just with 1383, but how they can exceed expectations with their service. If your board was to approve this, the recommended staff report, the county staff and the public should realize some ease and efficiencies engaging with only one hauler. The change would also likely produce routing and truck efficiencies. Shifting gears, uh, I know we've spent some considerable time in some circles regarding a potential right of first refusal 
that uh, refuse haulers may have claimed. I think it's important in discussing that to look back at the last time the board has considered a similar item. Uh, a few years ago when there was a transfer of Eastern Kern hauling franchises. I say that's a similar transaction because there are a few differences to note. One difference is that the bins transaction was an asset transfer transaction, which included an assignment of the franchise. However, these transactions today are stock sales where Burtech would own the entire stock of all of our family companies. This is a key issue because our proposed transfer of voting stock does not allow for a right of first refusal by the contract, which is obviously we've taken some considerable time and study on that. And when we did this the last time, the time and study in the bins transactions led to an outcome. The outcome was presented to you as in a staff report in 2018, May 22nd, 2018 by County Council Mark Nations. And what he did there is he, he presented the opportunity to remove an ordinance, to consider the right of first refusal ordinance that the county had. Let me quote his staff report. Uh, section 5.36.080-H, which is sometimes referred to as a right of first refusal, is being removed in its entirety. This provision was deemed to be vague, unworkable in actual practice, and possibly unconstitutional as an infringement of the right to contract and a deprivation of a property interest without due process. Furthermore, he goes down a couple sentences and in the report it says, to the extent individual franchise agreements have provisions pertaining to the right of first refusal, Public Works will be working with the franchisee to am franchisees to amend those agreements to bring them into com conformity with the changes being proposed today. Your board voted on that, agreed to take out that ordinance. So in doing so, the right of first refusal essentially, it lives on in some of these contracts, but it's between the contract holder and potentially another, another uh, hauler, which of course as being a, a stock sale, this doesn't apply. Uh, I will be here for, for questions. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. We urge you to. Thank you. Supervisor. Excuse me. Thank you. Supervisor Perez does have a question. Thank Mr. you. Pinero. Good to see you, Jacob. Nice to see you. Uh, I just have, I'm very curious about the legal matter because I don't know it uh, very well. I'm sure you do. Is it your team's position that the ordinance retroactively modified the terms of a contract? Is that your s basic sentiment? I don't believe so. I don't believe that's the case, but the, this transaction being a stock sale and the contracts only holding the right of first refusal on it, an assignment of the franchise or an asset sale, those are two separate types of transactions. So the right of first refusal only lives as a potential for an asset sale. This is not an asset sale, it's a completely different type of deal. Very good, thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public speakers, please? Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the board. I'll make a motion on staff's recommendation. Second. Okay, any question or discussion? Seeing none, please cast your votes. The motion is approved, all ayes. Thank you. That brings us to item Number 35 on our agenda. This was on consent, but has been removed by our county administrative office. And so I'll turn to our chief administrative officer, Ryan Alsop, to start us off on the discussion on item 35. Good afternoon. Caught me unprepared here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, th this agenda item uh, is a request for your board to accept and implement a grant from the State of California Department of Parks and Recreation for the development of a children's adventure uh, play area at Hart Memorial Park. And make findings that the project is exempt from further CEQA review, directing my office to file a CEQA notice of exemption. 
Um, this item uh, I pulled off this afternoon as a courtesy to the local uh, Sierra Club, uh, specifically uh, members of that local Sierra Club, Mr. Gordon Nipp and Mr. Eddie Lane, uh, who provided a letter, I believe yesterday or the day before, uh, that came in um, uh, make, uh, conveying some issues that they have uh, with this item. Um, they are, uh, in essence, asking you not to approve this project. Um, in that letter, they have, they have stated that the county must not declare that this children's adventure play area um, is exempt from CEQA, uh, and that they insinuate that the project being proposed, uh, which is a children's adventure play area, is not only not consistent with the use of Hart Park, but that the project is a considerable change and considerable expansion of the use of Hart Park. Uh, they also state in their letter that this project involves 11 acres of the park, which is not accurate. Uh, this project involves just two acres of a 370 acre park. According to uh, the letter goes on uh, that, that they had sent us, uh, they had stated that according to observers uh, over the Easter Sunday, Easter holiday, there were an estimated 20 to 25,000 people out at the park, um, estimating about 3,000 vehicles. I think that demonstrates to you that this park is much more than a community park for areas around it. Uh, this park is heavily used by lots of people uh, from all over the county. Uh, and they uh, make the claim that this, um, I quote, uh, new and large project, uh, a children's play area, will attract even more usage. Um, they also stated that according to the preliminary concept design included in the report, that the project seems to include a music zone. It does, and I'll explain what that is a little bit later. Uh, and they go on to state that if the design is in an actuality the final design, the, the county must address the noise impact of this music zone, uh, which could, uh, uh, could potentially have negative impact, uh, impacts on the park and features such as birds and wildlife habitat and, quote, the continued function of Hart Park as a natural respite for Kern County residents. Uh, I'd like to take this time to describe to you what this project is and isn't. Uh, the Children's Adventure Play Area uh, is part of the community-developed Hart Park Master Plan. As you may recall, a few years ago, the county undertook an extensive community engagement and input process on the future of the park. Uh, and through that effort, community members voiced their strong support for providing improved amenities and outdoor recreational play areas for children and their families who use this park. Uh, the community voiced their desire for not only a state-of-the-art, contemporary, and inclusive children's play area, but the importance of this amenity in the context of keeping children and their families out of the Kern River, which has taken the lives of children and adults alike over the years. The National Recreation and Parks Association notes that engaging children and youth for passive and active recreation in nature has, has clinically been shown to reduce stress and contribute to positive health development. However, the proximity to the Kern River presents a special issue for public safety, particularly for children. The deceptive speed and force of the river flows is well documented and presents both a focus for being, bringing people to the park and a challenge for safe recreational experiences uh, for these kids. The proposed children's adventure play area uh, is in an area currently utilized for similar purposes. So um, what you see before you on your screen is a, uh, is a satellite overview of Hart Park. And this tack represents the spot where this proposed project uh, will be going. Um, you can see our new nature center is here. This is the east entry, west entry, trailhead, and really everything else in between. Um, this play area is uh, it's going to replace an existing playground 
uh, replace a restroom that was previously removed and revitalize an existing picnic area on just two acres, again, of a 370 acre park. It will contain playground equipment for free play, specifically designed for children in separate ages for uh, areas for ages two to five uh, and from five to 12 years of age and will incorporate splash pad elements within and around these two structures along with ADA access paths, benches, picnic tables, uh, a restroom, a shower, and ADA parking. It currently doesn't exist, the ADA portion of it. Uh, the music zone referenced uh, in the project, which the local Sierra Club is apparently taking issue with, is simply a proposed design feature incorporated into the playground structures meant to provide an interactive, stimulating, uh, hand-operated musical sound experience, bells and chimes and other things you can bang on for children with certain special needs, such as autism and sensory issues. The project size and scope are accurately described and of sufficient detail to approve this project. The project scope is additionally consistent with the requirements of the Kern River specific trails plan in that it does not interfere with that plan whatsoever. The Kern River plan element 441 uh, under public facilities, specifically, it's specifically consistent with the parks and recreation areas, Hart Park map code 3.1, which delineates public and private recreation facilities and, uh, and campground or park areas. The purpose of this designation is to provide a wide variety of facilities to serve the many recreational interests and varying interests of our residents. It's also consistent with the goals and recommendations of the Kern County Parks Master Plan. Uh, one, to develop and maintain a countywide system of regional parks, natural open space, and recreational facilities that together provide opportunities for both active and passive recreation, serving the wide-ranging recreation and social needs of the diverse and varied communities of our county. Uh, to rehabilitate, renovate, and modernize existing parks and recreational facilities and to provide access to various types of indoor and outdoor recreation facilities with the capacity to support increased recreation programming and provide year-round recreation opportunities for all Kern County residents. It's also, and, and probably most importantly, uh, consistent with the Hart Park Improvement Plan, a project that was specifically requested by the public and included as part of the plans and presentation to the Parks and Recreation Committee, uh, Commission and as well as your board and discussed uh, numerous times, uh, in fact, uh, at these meetings. We continue to recommend this project, which has been requested through, uh, again, through the extensive community engagement that we undertook. It is an essential component of your board's direction and the Kern County Parks and Recreation Commission's focus on providing equitable access to high quality amenities in our parks while ensuring the safety and maintenance of our parks meet the highest standards. Most importantly, this project will save lives, ensuring that children have an alternative place to play when they're in the park, uh, place to play, recreate, and stay cool in nature uh, while keeping away from the Kern River, which can be quite deadly, particularly in the summer months. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I had um, a few other uh, pictures if your board would like to see them, overviews of the, uh, of the site itself. I'll maybe do, walk through those real quickly before I hand it off. So this is kind of an overview of Hart Park. This is a sort of drill down focus on the area in question. Um, this area would occupy the development of the children's adventure play area. And this is a design schematic of the area as we incorporate it uh, among the, uh, the trees in, uh, in this area, which is currently heavily used uh, for picnicking uh, and children's play currently. Um, I am happy to answer any, any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Alsop. Any questions from the board before I go to the public? Okay, seeing none, I'll now open this up to members of the public. Um, anyone present that would like to make comment on this item, please come forward.
Good afternoon. I have some pictures too. Good afternoon, I'm Eddie Lane with the Sierra Club. Let me first of all begin by inviting you tomorrow to at 11 o'clock, the uh, Kern River Parkway Nature Center will open in Hark Park. This $1.2 million investment was based upon the community's fervent interest in preserving the 1940 WPA Adobe as an informational hub about plant and animal life along the Kern River. Tomorrow is a time for celebration. Some years ago, there, was a there were a series of meetings to elicit public input regarding the future of Hart Park. The number one priority was the protection of the park's existing natural beauty, existing natural beauty. Water is essential to nature. Water is essential to Hart Park. During those meetings several years ago, we were not in a drought. Um, now we are. In today's Californian, Californians could see mandatory water cuts. The protection of running water in the Kern River for plant and animal life is essential. As such, this is not a time to take water from the Kern River for a proposed splash pad. Especially when there's no, water written, no written water conservation plan for Hart Park. Especially when there's no water metering for water used in Hart Park or for a golf course or for Lake Main as was required in the 2016 agreement between the city of Bakersfield and Kern County for the purchase of Kern River water. The city owns the water, the county purchases it. Especially when it's recently, and that picture was uh, uh, passed around, May 11 at 2.20 in the afternoon, sun, grass was being watered in Hart Park. That's not a water conservation practice. I've also packed, passed out pictures, uh, a picture taken uh, of a broken uh, sprinkler pipes in the all-purpose trail. This was identified six months ago, has not been rectified. Until we have reasonable, common sense, measurable water conservation and water management practices in place, written in place, this $3 million plan needs to be put on the shelf. There are also other major environmental issues which uh, Sierra Club mentioned in our letter. We talked about it uh, back in December before the board. It's reviewed in today's late letter. Biological resources, aesthetics, air quality, greenhouse gas emissions, and traffic. Remember, there's no public transportation to Hart Park. Now that should be a priority. If Hart Park is, is, is overused, let's get public transportation there. And there's been a lot of talk in the past about developing regional parks. Let's develop regional parks use our ingenuity and our consultants for that. The county's failure to adequately address water-related and other CEQA issues in its environmental review is a recipe for creating problems instead of celebration. And couldn't this $1.47 million, these are state per capita funds. They could be used in any district. And the over 1.5 million in current county general funds better be used to renovate restrooms in the seven restrooms currently closed, locating in, located in three supervisorial districts, or at least provide porta potties for the public's use. Um, we all appreciate the work of the county administrative office and the community with their development with regard to the development of the Hart Park Master Plan. But that master plan was not set in concrete. Example. About a year ago, we, we had a, uh, a meeting with county administrative office staff. The dog park is gone. That was part of the master plan. The amphitheater is delayed. And the original master plan had the adobe demolished. So we need flexibility in light of changing circumstances. That's what we're asking today. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers? My name is Margie Bell. I've spoken here before. I'm a retired teacher. Um, thank you for letting us 
make some comments. And we appreciate all the effort that's gone into Hart Park and the Adobe House and Mr. Maggard's district. It, it's really a wonderful accomplishment. Uh, I've looked at the plans and I've had a couple people comment to me about them. And I, I really kind of like the plan. I, I like the, uh, the idea of a water park for kids. Uh, and I'm a grandmom, although they don't come up here from Long Beach very often. I had kids and we spent a lot of time out in Hart Park on the equipment that is probably still there, like from 40 years ago. Uh, I'm not sure about its placement in the park. And I don't know if this is an original idea or whether you'd consider moving the splash pad or whatever it's called to another location. The park is a place where people go to hike, they play with frisbees, they, they walk around the park, they have picnics, it's kind of a quiet area. And when I heard someone from Lancaster talk about Hart Park, they said, you know, we don't have anything like this out there. This is really the nicest place in Kern County, and we have to be really careful to preserve uh, what its wonders are. And the wonders include the trees and the grass and the quiet and the river. And the new nature center will accentuate all these natural qualities of the park because it will be teaching children about stewardship of the earth and how to care for plants and animals and the natural environment. Uh, last night I started thinking about where this could go on county property. I don't know, maybe it's too late to make a decision about this, but there's that area above Hart Park with its view of Lake Ming, looking down on Lake Ming, and it's a children's park too. And there's already parking, a parking area up there. And uh, this would be an ideal place for a children's park away from the uh, nature center and the activities down below near the river. And um, the, one of the concerns I think has arisen about parking, and I know there's an area set aside for parking down down in the place it's positioned now. I'm, my worry is too that that's gonna end up being paved over for parking because of the need for um, uh, handicap parking and so forth. And that to me would severely uh, affect the nature of Hart Park. Anyway, I'll leave it at that and I in other words, I, I favor the plan. It's a really quite a delightful plan, and it looks like fun, but I'm not sure that it's appropriately placed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? Um, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Marion Vargas. Um, I've been a, a Hart Park user um, probably since 1969. Uh, we raised our kids going to Hart Park uh, when our children were young. Uh, there was a lot more uh, interactive uh, equipment. There was an amusement park, there were pony rides, uh, and things like that at the park. Uh, I've read the, uh, I think it's a hundred year history that uh, um, uh, Mr. Gia wrote about Hart Park. And uh, you know, it was constructed to be a community asset with a lot of interactive um, enjoyment of nature and of uh, the recreational opportunities that it presented. Um, I am a member of Sierra Club, uh, although in no official capacity, I pay my dues. And, uh, and also of Audubon, I've been birding out at Hart Park, and, uh, and I am sort of recently a member of the um, Native Plant Society. So I care about uh, the nature of Hart Park, uh, but I, um, I think it's important to recognize the original purpose and the historical heritage of Hart Park as being an interactive 
user-friendly um, outdoor park space. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with Eddie Lane about the need to monitor water usage and to have an official management plan. Uh, also, we need a management plan and uh, preservation for passive usage at our um, more recently established nature uh, preserve uh, in the Kern River Parkway, and that's 95 acres. Uh, but we're looking at using, what, uh, 185, 185th percent of the park, two acres, uh, to establish a, a playground structures uh, and areas for um, for uh, children to have something to play on. The whole thing, it's not a water park. It's a playground, two playground areas with a splash pad uh, with, uh, with water features, music features, which I'm, I'm sure the birds would sing along with, um, and, uh, and a new restroom. And it sounds like a wonderful idea, and I appreciate, Mr. Alsop, that this um, item was pulled from the consent agenda so that people could hear better what the plan is. I know that it was discussed and presented at length at the uh, Parks and Rec Commission meeting. I know that this, this um, board had approved the grant application for the funds. I personally believe that this is an appropriate use of block grant funds. Um, for Hart Park because of the location, uh, the, the, the socioeconomic status of the housing in uh, the Hart Park area geographically. Um, my understanding is, um, if, I hope I've cracked on this, uh, is that Hart Park is not eligible for some of the grant monies, or we're not eligible to apply for some of the grant monies uh, for low income areas. And yet if you uh, drive through Hart Park especially on a weekend, uh, as we did twice on Saturday, uh, you'll see it jam-packed, and most of the people there are brown, and they don't, aren't driving Teslas. You know, it's, um, and, they're, and it's crowded, and people are having a wonderful time. The past drive-through on Saturday afternoon, there were two large groups of people happily enjoying submerged waste high in the Kern River. It, they were cooling off. I've seen people, of course, in Heart Lake uh, also, but um, now it's true, people will probably still get in the lake, I mean, I mean and, the, and the river, rather. Um, but I think if there were an attractive um, playground feature such as is proposed, um, I think that people would migrate towards that. If there's concern about the water usage, I don't know what the plan is and you didn't describe it, with regard to any recirculation of water. Uh, I know that any water runoff could go to the grassy areas that are around there, or it could be maybe channeled back into the canal, um, et cetera. And so, I mean, I think there are ways that those types of concerns could be handled. It certainly wouldn't have the impact of putting in a swimming pool. Um, and I, I think I think that all of our, communi our community, and especially those with fewer personal economic resources, have a right to good quality recreational opportunities. The playground equipment out there is, is there's a paucity of it. It's just, there's not much there. What is there is not all that much fun. Um, my daughter lives in Texas. Um, they have a neighborhood park that has uh, similar features that, you, that um, you are in your design plan. Um, and it's so, it's well used uh, and it's not dangerous. And I see with uh, exhibit B in the proposal uh, that you're giving to the board, there are lots of restrictions and things that the county has to do to maintain this and keep it safe. And so I think it is a good idea. I so hope that each of you supervisors, who I'm sure are listening to my long-winded comments, uh, will uh, support this. Uh, Hart Park has been neglected way too long, and thank goodness this is a scaled-down version of what Mr. Alsop uh, happily suggested about putting an adventure park uh, on on the island there. And you know that that idea. So this is really scaled down. I don't think we should be all upset about it. Um, 
That's my personal feeling. Those, the people who have objected to it are good friends of mine. I respect their judgment, but I think I'm right. So um, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, thanks very much. Uh, and I have other information I could share. Other people wrote to me and expressed their support for this idea that, that um, you know, the community that uses Hart Park especially deserves to have this. I don't think it's necessarily going to attract, you know, it's not like a big water park that's going to attract people who are going to pay money to do this. But I think the people who are already at the park are likely to walk over and uh, with their kids and use it. And it's not too far from the Nature Center, which is for the whole Kern River Parkway. It's not just for Hart Park. So I, th I think it's a complimentary kind of thing, and we sure need a better bathroom. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public speakers, please? Hello, my name is Maria Polite, and I'm just back in town from a quarantine in Costa Rica, and much of what's going on today, um, I'm sort of out of the loop. But I walk in Hart Park every day, and I walk uh, two miles, three miles. And I have been in a children's park in St. George, Utah, in the middle of the city, that was just amazing. And the, the fun and the interactive things that the kids were doing was just great. And I'm all for our having that in Hart Park. I am worried about water conservation. I mean, I'm very careful at my house not to have a lawn that's important. It's just weeds. But And, and this morning, I just have to share that I was walking at Lake Ming this morning. And for the first time in my many years here, and all around parks everywhere, I saw a beaver. And he was swimming all across the lake. It was incredible. And then the birds uh, at Hart Park mean so much to me. But I, I do believe we need to update in a modern way our children's uh, park there. And so I support that. I wish I could show you the pictures of what I took in St. George years ago, but I couldn't probably find them. But hopefully the designer of this park is going to have the newest and funnest and latest thing for kids to do. Um, water park, uh, yeah, it's hot here. It would be really nice, but we do have to monitor it. And so I don't cut any more trees. We, if you make a parking lot, please don't cut the trees. That's real important to me and to others who go out there birding. And so thank you for um, all the work you've done. I, and I do appreciate that it's scaled down because this is a kind of a park that you don't know how important it is until you lose it because it is a natural place to walk and ride your bike. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers, please? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Antje Lauer. I'm a faculty member at CSUB. And I didn't really intend to speak today, but this is an interesting discussion. I also have kids, but they're now teenagers. And I'm at Hart Park quite a bit for enjoying nature. And I think the argument bringing forward of conserving water is the biggest one when we consider uh, putting this kind of splash park to life. But it occurred something else to me when I was listening to safety. And I could imagine that people who come to Hart Park with their little kids who want to enjoy the Splash Park and they see crowds of people already there, they will not turn around and go home. They will go play at the river. And then you might even have more kids at danger of accidents in the river than before. I think this has to be discussed and, and considered. It could be a safety issue. You want to consider that? Thank you, I was just thinking that through. I didn't intend to speak. but. This just occurred to me, if I would have little kids come to the park and then see that there are hundreds of kids already playing there, the kids probably want to go in the water. Where do they go? They go in the river. Okay. Ma'am, would you spell your name for us? Yeah, I my name is Antje Lauer, A-N-T-J-E, and last name L-A-U-E-R. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Any other speakers, please? Okay, seeing none then, we'll close the public comment period and return to the board. 
Um, CA, our, I don't know, Ryan Alsop, our CAO, has punched in. Mr. Alsop? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I see Lorelei has taken a position up over there. She might want to add to, to whatever I want to say, but I did want to just say that uh, I appreciate um, uh, more ways than I can express the comments of um, s some of those folks um, today. I appreciate that very much. Uh, the water, I uh, beg your pardon, ma'am, for not being more uh, detailed about the water. Um, you know, splash pad, uh, uh, it's really kind of splash pad incorporated into uh, this overall um, play area, uh, these structures, which will be amazing, by the way, um, and will be done in a way that celebrates uh, and honors uh, the park and the park's overall aesthetic, uh, complementary of that. But the water used, we're talking about summer months, and we haven't, you know, uh, really decided sort of uh, operationally how, how, it's, how it will work. But all of that water is going to be captured and reused for irrigation in the park before any other irrigation water is used. Um, so that is our uh, conservation measure that we're applying to this. Um, Trees, somebody said something about trees. I had a conversation with my wife this morning and she was telling me, man, I wish I could be on a planning commission because my only thing would be about trees. Just trees on everything. How many trees are we planting? If we're, you know, are we planting two or three as opposed to one? Uh, we, we need more trees here. Uh, and we need to, we need to um, maintain and support uh, the, tr the, the, the trees that we have, uh, and we would not, will not be cutting down trees uh, for, for this project at all. And in fact, um, cutting down any trees, if I find out about it uh, before they're done, I'm usually uh, banging the, the cage to try and find out and ha get a good reason on why that's being done, uh, because we should not be cutting down uh, any trees. Um, I... Uh, had a, I thought I had a couple of other comments, but I did just want to thank uh, you for uh, you all for your comments today, and to just um, reiterate that, you know, um, this project is a uh, is an important one. Um, it is the evolution of Hart Park. I mean, keep in mind we've had a lot of stuff out there over the years, uh, and you talked about 1969, ma'am. Um, you know, I was born in 1971. I spent a lot of time out there. Um, you know, riding the different rides, the train, which had a whistle on it, um, and all these things, the concessions. I went to the water slides. The best memories I've, I have are with my dad and my brother at those water slides. Um, you know, so there's been a lot done. This is a, uh, this is a, a project that's going to celebrate and be complimentary of the aesthetic of the park in a very small area. Uh, that kids are going to be jazzed about and families are going to be happy about and it's definite it's a definite improvement and I think it will save lives over the long run keeping people out of the river uh, if you didn't have this park they're going to the river anyway um, and uh, if they're not in Hart Lake and by the way part of our Hart Park master plan does include um, at some point uh, when we have the ability to do it and the funding to do it uh, creating some sort of a beach entry to that lake and a, and a swimming area uh, for kids and families to enjoy, uh, which I think would be um, uh, a benefit overall to, again, keeping kids out of the river and keeping them in that lake or over here at this, um, at this uh, play area. So uh, thank you, members of the board. Happy to answer any questions. Lorelei, do you have any comments? Ms. Oviat, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lorelai Oviat, Director of Kern County Planning and Natural Resources. I just want to touch on a couple of clarifications on the uh, CEQA uh, findings here. I have worked closely with General Services. So first, um, as noted in your recommendation, this is an exemption from further environmental review. So the state of California in the CEQA guidelines has certain kinds of projects that the legislature has 
an analyzed to say, if your project fits this category, you don't need to do further environmental review. There's been a lot of comments about you haven't done any environmental review. It's not accurate. These are the same exemptions that were used for the Adobe that the commenter invited you to the ribbon cutting for. Your board has used these exemptions carefully. And in this case, they fit this already disturbed area with a small footprint replacement, no trees being cut down, no vegetation being cut down. I'd also like to point out that the beach that Mr. Alsop mentioned is not part of the project before your board today. That is a future and that would have to go through its own review. Second, there's been a lot of comments in the letters you've received about quiet. The California Supreme Court has determined that the sound of laughing children and the screaming of children is not an, an issue. It is not classified as noise. It is not nuisance. And that was a specific finding. And the reason for that is you can't mitigate children. You can't make them stop screaming and you can't make them. And that was an absolute finding in a case for the California Supreme Court. Therefore, the quiet, there's nothing inherent to this project. There's no bandstand. There's no event center. There's nothing inherent to this project that would create noise that is not covered by these exemptions. And I am always available for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oviat. Supervisor Maggard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, uh, members of the public, for your input and uh, staff for your thorough analysis and recommendations today. <clears throat> One of the challenges and pleasures of working with um, folks out at Hart Park is that uh, they are smart, they are engaged, they are passionate, they pay attention to every detail, and they have a wide array of ideas. Uh, and it's fun to uh, talk with them. I, I, I'm a, a, by nature an optimistic person, and I used to think, well, I can, I'm sure we can get on the, a middle page where everybody will be happy. No, it didn't, that doesn't work out very well. Uh, but most people are happy at the end, and. I remember when I was a child, this, I'm, I was thinking here, when, what year was this? And uh, I'm a little older than, than uh, Mr. Alsop, but in about 1962 or three, I was seven years old. And um, I remember uh, my, my family had little resources, um, you know, coolers on their houses, and it was very, very hot. And that was the only place with shade that we could all the family could all go and be together. Nobody had a house big enough to do that. So my family would go congregate at Hart Park, and uh, the, the my every memory I have of that is the laughing, giggling, shrieking of children having fun, whether that was on the toys or it was in the water, splashing in the water. And my uh, big heroic uncle uh, in about 1962 had to jump into the lake there at Hart Park to save me as I was drowning, as I had bounced you know, into deeper and deeper water. And, uh, and he jumped in the water and saved me and pulled me out. And uh, I know the exact spot where that occurred. I have many, many memories of Hart Park and they were wonderful memories. And I'm glad my uncle was successful in getting me out of there. But um, the, the, when I see the families today, they are very, very much like my family was. They're the same kind of people with the same kind of, uh, demo, uh, well, maybe a different racial demographic, but the same economic demographic. The, you know, there, there just isn't much else for them. And a few years ago, we were on the verge of having Hart Park become just a shadow of what it was. And I am just thrilled that uh, in, the, in the time uh, since then until now, the community has rallied and become engaged and we, um, you know, Hart Park will never be that romantic, um, slightly blurred uh, remembrance we have of trains and bumper cars and, you know, that's not what Hart Park will ever be, but it's going to be something grand and it's going to be even more grand than it is now. So I'm, I'm grateful to all of you for being willing uh, to go along and, and I respect uh, and acknowledge the passion uh, of everybody that's involved and, the, and those that have a different opinion, but I am convinced that this is uh, a good step to go in the right direction. I have been involved in uh, building um, splash pads, uh, spray parks, in Sears Park in Oildale, with the, immediately upon coming into uh, my role here, uh, we, we set about doing that. 
and then a few years later at Pioneer Park, which was then, now it's in the fifth district, but then it was in the third district, uh, down the street from where I grew up in the park at which I played when I was a child. And we put a, a splash pad or a spray park in there. Both of those have a reservoir that captures the, the water as it is used and then recycles that to be used uh, again and again and again. So it's not just you know once and done and, and thrown away. And I'm sure we'll have to have extensive discussions about the the uh, cistern and whatever all the other elements are of what goes in there, but but that will be done appropriately. I'm sure um, Ms. Oviat, will it not? Yes, she's nodding her head yes in the affirmative. So um, for, for today's purposes, I would like to just have you reiterate one more time, Ms. Oviat, why this is exempt from further sequel review and uh, why we are, it is appropriate for us to move forward without pausing for that process. Thank you. So um, as I noted, there are specific guidelines sections, 15301, 15302, 15303, and 15304 that apply. These are for smaller projects where there are limited modifications to existing facilities, replacement of older facilities, small numbers of new structures, and then of course related changes in the condition of the land, such as there might be some clearing of what uh, is already there. And those exemptions apply. I have extensively reviewed the actual design that has been done for this, for this project. It's limited to the two acres, and it is, will not result in any removal of vegetation, filling in of wetlands, changes or replacement of trees, and therefore it does not need any further environmental review. Thank you. I want to say one thing about, I forgot to say something about the drown hazard. Um, I ride my bike regularly through Hart Park and through the campground area and around Lake Ming and back. And uh, it it is tragic to me when uh, during the summer months, almost every time I ride through the park, I see families in their their little lawn chairs sitting there with blankets out and they have their children playing out on the river at where the campground is, right before you go transition from the campground over to the lake. Uh, and I have tragically seen two instances where somebody had drowned. And in one of those, th this little boy was laid there on the, on the, in the mud uh, at the edge of the, the river. And I, I just couldn't fa you know, fathom how his parents would put him in a position that he, that could happen to him. So there, there are alternatives, and uh, there, there is a lake nearby. I think it's much more likely that if, if for some reason the splash pad was overly used and there was something to go, there's, there's a much safer place to be next to it, just a few yards away where the, the, the lake is and not where the river is. But I hope one day we can, as we, you know, and I'm committed as long as I am here and after I am done here, to, to make the Kern River Corridor everything it can be. But getting those parents to understand uh, that they are, the danger they're putting their children in is, is just vital. Uh, that, that's a discussion for another day. So uh, if, if it's all right with my colleagues, I'm gonna go ahead and make a motion and then we can have whatever discussion you'd like to have. But I would make a motion that we approve staff's recommendation, that we approve and accept the implementation, implementation of the uh, grant and follow all the other procedures that are outlined there in the, in the staff's recommendation to us. And I want to thank again the public for their passion for this and our staff for buying into the vision to make Hart Park everything it can be. I will always be grateful to Ryan and Jeff and Carl and many, many others in the, the county staff and Lorelei for, for making those things happen, but also to the public, um, for all of you for, um, for being involved, whether that's Eddie, who I sometimes bump heads with, but. Uh, particularly with Margie and with Marion, who I've worked with many times, not to diminish anyone else, but I admire you folks and I'm grateful for your help with this. Thank you, Supervisor. Supervisor Couch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Excuse me, thank you. I'll, I'll second that. Um, Mr. Lane mentioned that the city of Bakersfield owns the water and the county just buys it. Um, in fact, if there were, if there, if their uh, water districts were watching today, they would probably take great issue with that because there's a very complex and complicated uh, water rights 
to New River every day, and I, I don't know that you could dream up a more complicated system than we than, than, <laughs> that exists. But uh, did we hear, speaking of the water, whole water issue, did we hear from any of the water districts? Um, I didn't think so. I was just, none of them reached out to you with a concern. Um, I'll defer to General Services and Mr. Alsop, but my understanding is no, because these splash pads have a recycled feature uh, that well, also yeah. can be used to irrigate and replace additional water that you might be using for irrigation. Thank you. And I have to go along with this because my high school government teacher strode up to the microphone and told me I needed to go along with it. So I will vote in favor. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to our final item, item 42, proposed salary range adjustment for sheriff's aid from range 51.1 to 55.6, effective June 4th, 2022. This is an item under the County Administrative Office, Human Resources Division. We have Devin Brown with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chairman Scrivener, members of the board. Uh, we're here to uh, seek your board's approval for a salary range adjustment for our sheriff's aid classification and the extra help version of that classification as well. So the Sheriff's Office, County Administrative Office, uh, specifically the Human Resources Division, IT, or not IT, Communications, and our budget team have been meeting uh, very frequently over the last several months uh, to cr think of creative ways to um, help address the staffing challenges that the Sheriff's Office has been facing of late and over the last couple years. Uh, that's coming forward in a number of different uh, changes that our office and the sheriff's office is bringing forward, whether it's changing the recruitment process, uh, looking at new ways to uh, get outreach to the community, and in this particular item, uh, improving the salary for uh, its existing positions. So our goal at the end of the day is to help provide public safety to our community. I know that's the Sheriff's Office and the Sheriff uh, Youngblood's goal. It's also your board's goal and priority. Uh, it starts with little actions like this. Uh, our Sheriff's Aid uh, classification has been utilized uh, by our Sheriff's Office in a number of different capacities, but more recently, it helps assist with our detention officers and the detention facilities that the Sheriff's Office runs. Uh, and has mandated staffing needs. Uh, it's important that every position is filled and all vacancies uh, are filled as well. Uh, that helps us fill our detention ranks and helps put deputies out on the street at the end of the day, that's the goal. Uh, so this action today uh, is a step in that direction to improve the salary for 105 positions at the Sheriff's Office uh, needs and uses critically to help uh, its detention facilities. Uh, so that's why the price takes a little high, uh, $1.7 million annually uh, uh, in cost. Uh, this position is right now just above the $15 minimum wage. Uh, as the minimum wage has increased over the last several years, uh, we haven't addressed this particular position's wage in respect to those increases. So we're attempting to do that here. Uh, uh, address the compaction that's been uh, seen with the minimum wage moving up to $15 an hour, $15.50 in January, and uh, um, again, provide uh, a wage increase for 105 uh, employees within the Sheriff's Office. The total increase is just over 25%, which sounds pretty big, uh, but it's uh, um, been a, a long needing uh, position to be addressed uh, by our, our county. So. Uh, we've uh, met with SEIU as part of our um, contract requirement uh, to address this position and have reached agreement on this particular proposed uh, range increase. So our uh, recommended action is for your board to approve a salary range adjustment for sheriff's aid, uh, item numbers 0765 and 8382 uh, from a range of 51.1 to 55.6. Uh, that would become effective June 4th, which is the beginning of uh, the pay period following this board meeting. And uh, our office will implement that upon your board's approval. Be happy to answer any questions that you have, but we're excited that uh, we were able to bring this forward to your board for consideration today. 
and uh, look forward to uh, the impact it will have on our employees and the sheriff's office operations. Uh, that concludes my comments. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We'll now go to members of the public. Are there any members of the audience who would like to make any comment on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the board. I'll make a motion on staff's recommendation. Thank you, Gavin. This second. is very important. Thank okay, you. You have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. All ayes. Thank you. And having no additional items to consider, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, June 14th at 9 a.m. We are adjourned.